Okay, yet again, I am dumbstruck by this. I got a comment that popped up on my thing, and it was about where did the first babies come from? It's on Matt Dillahunty's channel, and some guy wrote in the description that when the mother turtle lays an egg, the turtle does whatever it does without the mother. But the turtle needed the mother to be born. The turtle mother needed to be there to nurture the egg so that the turtle could be born. The mother had the turtle and laid the turtle. Without the mother, there is no turtle. Life comes from the mother. So here's what I want every one of you to ask yourselves. This is what we're missing. Now I can say it how I want to say it. If you need a man and a woman to make a child and create a child to bring a child into this existence, if we go way back in time, how did the first mother bring themselves up? How did the first father, male, bring themselves up? And how did the first woman bring themselves up, female? When, let me tell you this. If a woman has a baby, and I know this sounds horrible, but if you leave that baby on its own or you leave them out in the elements, the baby will die. The baby cannot support itself. It cannot live. It is impossible for the baby to live on its own. So here is the thing that got me dumbstruck. I, I cannot get past this. This is something that nobody can answer. All this evolution stuff, I think, is complete nonsense when we're talking in the terms of the first person or the first animal coming about. The only way, and even with animals, when an animal is born, the mother, ha it, there has to be a mother there. But where did the first mother come from? How did the first mother or father nurture themselves to become what it is? It cannot happen. It's an impossibility. It's impossible for this to happen. And this really made me see something when this person wrote this down. Here's what they wrote right here. I'll tell you what they wrote. They wrote, Turtle, turtles lay eggs, then leave. The eggs hatch. Baby turtle grows up or not without no involvement of the mother. And here's what I wrote in response to that. Yeah, but how did the first mother or father turtle come to be what it is without the first mother to have it? The first mother or father cannot just make itself or come about without a mother. So if we go back to the first mother and and father turtle, what was there to bring it about in existence, into existence? Basically, what was there to make the first turtle? This is really hard to explain, I know, but you need a mother and father turtle to make a turtle, so how did the first turtle come to be? Now listen, when I do this video, I am one of these people, I am on the fence of there being, there may be being some kind of intelligence that is more intelligent than us or something that might have put this into action that we just don't know about. I don't know. I can't say that I know. None of us will ever know. Or, or, 
This is the most miraculous. This is the most. How, how many chances in a number of chances could it be that little tiny cells, little tiny organisms could bring this about? But then again, I say, yes, these things do make us, but it makes us in the womb of the mother. Are you getting what I'm saying here? Are you really, really following me? Whatever comes into existence, it was in the womb of a mother at one time. So where did the first mother come from? There was no womb for the first mother. There was no womb for the first turtle. There was no womb for the first child or the first moose or the first ape or gorilla or whatever you want to say. So how did that come up and raise itself up from just material things or the things of the earth? I think it's an, an impossibility. Even things in the ocean these things come about, these organisms were already there, but how did they get there? How, how did they just come to be on their own and make other organisms? Like if you think that this was always here, then when was there a beginning? When was there a beginning? Like how can you wrap your mind around this? Like this, this is the mystery I'm talking about that I can't wrap my mind around. And in a sense, it drives me crazy. But then in a sense, it keeps me going because I think about this. And I say, if there was no beginning, then how did we end up to be right now what we are if there wasn't any beginning? To think that there was never a start. If there's never a start and there's never a finish, then how did all this come to be if there was never a beginning to start it? <laughs> if, there was a, if there was never a beginning to dirt and water, and, and that's another thing, water. Water in and of itself is another topic. How did all of this water the oceans just get here like this. They say that it came from comets and meteors and stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe it did. But then I keep going back and I keep going back in time. And I say, if these things were always here, how were they always here? How did it just come here? How was it just here? How was there dirt? How was there rock? How was their gases and everything that makes up our solar system and our galaxies and the air and, and everything, radiation, so many things. How in the world was this just here? And then we came to be. It, it just, it, I cannot wrap my mind around this. I, the, the more that I attempt <laughs> to wrap my mind around this, the more that I am just dumbfounded and I realize that I will never know. And that mystery, that mystery is, <laughs> there's something in the mystery of not knowing that is very exciting. It's something that we can talk about and we can learn from, but we will never know. We might be able to learn something from this, but we will never know. We will never know. Like we, we talk about an afterlife and all this stuff. Well, I guess we won't know until we're dead. And if there isn't, then we won't know anything. The only thing we know is right now and the reality that we're living right now. But this is something that I just cannot wrap my mind around. It is 
how could we be able to make a bomb that is the size of three or four men or, you know, six feet, seven feet tall, eight feet tall by five feet or whatever, and it can blow up an entire (laughs) city or whatever, like these atomic bombs. How is that possible that all that energy can be in that tiny little amount of space? And then this thing with where animals and humans, when you say came from, see, even saying came from, okay, if, well, do you realize how crazy this is? When you say come from, okay, what if it didn't come from anything and it was always here? Then when was there a beginning? And if it was always here, how long does it go back before there, do you you understand what I mean? Like if you're thinking of eternity here, you're thinking of an eternal aspect here. I used to think of this when I was a kid, like if there's this eternal heaven that people go to, I had this weird feeling in my head that if it's eternal, it's a thousand years, a million years, a trillion years, a trillion times a trillion, a zillion times a zillion. Okay, say that time has passed. Now you're still here and another zillion years, another zillion years, and it just keeps going and going and going. And it's always now. The now never stops. But when did the now begin? See, I sometimes I'm saying that there, is, there was no beginning. It was just always here. But then I say, if it was always here, then how in the world was organisms, cells always here? How was DNA always here? How was dirt, gas, all of these things always here? And it's something that you cannot wrap your mind around. It doesn't matter how hard you try. It doesn't matter how much you study. It doesn't matter what anyone tells you. It doesn't matter what these professors, these religionists, it doesn't matter what anybody says. This is something so unique in and of itself. It is the uniqueness. You cannot get any more unique than nature and existence and and how things are things. You can't get any more unique than that. That is the meaning of unique is the nature of this. And then asking why is nature the way nature is and it's cruel and it's vicious and it's calculating and it's it has no pity it 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 doesn't judge it just does what it does i ask why does that do that but it does it does do that and then i ask why are humans like we are it's how we are it just is the way that it is but at least we have the ability to actually see what we're doing. We have the ability to reflect back on ourselves what we did and why we did and what are we doing and when are we doing it. We have this kind of moral compass in us to make decisions and and all these other things. And that in and of itself is something so crazy. But then when I think about, when I think about, even though I can't stand a lot of the human condition and I, I don't like things and I like things. Yet, yet there it is again, the contradiction going, the irony, the conundrum going. And I'm going to say this a lot because it's what I'm on all the time. But when I think of this thing with, when you think of 
a nose, eyes, ears, brain, heart, chest, nipples, breasts, penis, vagina, scrotum, um, kneecaps, toes, veins, arteries, fingers, hearing, the thing inside your ear, the cochlea that hears, receptors, teeth, tongue, your nervous system, your spine. When you think of these things, I just cannot, how could this have just came to be by itself? How could it have just came to be? How could these tiny organisms or these cells and DNA how could it know to do this, people? How could it know? How could it know this? And then I say, if there is some kind of intelligence, if there is a God or creator, how did that thing come about? How did that thing come into existence? How did this thing know to do whatever? How did that come to be? It, it, it couldn't have just made itself. And yet again, it's going back to the first mother. It couldn't have just made itself. A creator couldn't have just made itself. All of this couldn't have just made itself. So it either had to just be here all the time. Or maybe something did put it into action, but I still can't agree on either one. I can't say that I, <laughs> I can't say that I believe in anything and I can't say that anything else. It's like, what are the chances of this happening? What are the chances that I came into this existence and I got to live for at least some time out of the fraction of however long it goes back in time. See, this is where time can't exist because if you're talking about a beginning, when did this start? See, if you, if you think of it that there can't be a start, then this is going to boggle your mind like nothing ever before when you think that, well, if there wasn't no beginning and it didn't start and nothing had a beginning, then it always was and there is no time. It's just we think that there's time going by, but it's always now. It's always right now. And to be able to be here now in existence and actually moving and tasting and touching and hearing and feeling and all these things, even though I go through suffering and I go through chronic issues and I have problems and I worry and, and I'm doing, doubting things and I'm looking into things and studying things, this is just something that I know that I will never wrap my mind around. And if I'm dead, I'm never going to even know I existed in the first place unless there really is some kind of something that this thing, this thing here goes when we die. And I, I doubt that too. And then I doubt this whole evolution thing. I just doubt everything. I doubt it all. I just doubt it all. And in that doubt, there is that mystery there. There is that mystery that a couple other people like myself talk about. And it's, to me, that is something that is, <laughs> there is no word for it. You cannot put a word to it. The only word I can think of is mystery and mystique and not knowing. And then I'm left with this. I'm left here saying how and why, but I know that there isn't an answer. 
And that is something, that is at least one thing that keeps me going in this life is that I don't know. If I was sure of something, if I knew for sure of something, if I was absolutely sure, then what else would there be to live for? What else would there be to do? What would I do with my life? What, why would I do anything? Where would there be to go? If I knew that there was something that made this or created this, or I knew that there was something after this, or I knew how all this came about, then there wouldn't be any mystery. There wouldn't be any type of guessing or playfulness or there would be none of the, the things that make us unique as people because we don't know. And I don't want to know. I want to say, my goodness, this is, this is absolutely bonkers that I can't figure this thing out. I don't want to know certain things. We say that we want to know. I, I really don't think that we want to know. I really, I think we're wrong when we say we want to know everything. I don't want to know everything. I want a lot of things to be a mystery. But I just, if you really, really think about this, it took me so long to actually be able to say this how I was trying to really say it. Like I, I, I couldn't come to the way that I wanted to explain this, but now <laughs> I'm thinking about it, but I still can't get it across how I want to get it across to people. I just, I only know to a certain degree and then I don't know anymore. If there's a line going across this screen, I can only know er, there and then all this. I can't know. There's no way I can know. We can sit here and guess. We can sit here and argue. We can sit here and debate for an eternity, yet we will never know. And to me, that's something awesome. That is something mysterious and mystique and something. It's just, it, it's an entity in and of itself. It is the unique thing that is there. That is the uniqueness of this universe and everything that we know is that we don't know why things are. And it's not like, I'm not trying to figure it out. It's just, I wonder and I wonder and I wonder and I wonder and I wonder, and I wonder, and I wonder, and I just keep asking questions. I keep saying, how? Why? Even though I know there's not an answer. Even though I know I'm not going to find what I'm looking for. You know the song by U2? But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. You ain't never going to find what you're looking for. <laughs> and that should be something that you won't find what you're looking for. Okay, I found what I'm looking for. I've been looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow my whole life and I found it. Now what? I've been looking for Something, I, I don't really want to get into details because I don't want to offend anybody, but it really doesn't matter. Like, I've been looking for my father my whole life. Okay, you find your father and you talk with him and you know some things. Now what? Now what are you going to do? Then it's on to the next thing. I'm looking for the reason I do this thing. I'm looking for why... I'm depressed and why all these things are going on. And then when you get an answer to it, there's nothing else to do. So 
So this is the one thing. This is the one thing that keeps me going is that mystery. That not knowing is what keeps me going. And yet again, that is a conundrum in and of itself. It's an irony, a contradiction in and of itself. When I don't know certain things and people don't communicate, it can cause confusion. And when I don't know certain things, I'm discouraged that I don't know. But then not knowing some things, it's better that I don't know. Because if I did know, then there wouldn't be anything else to guess with. I wouldn't question anything. I wouldn't have anything to do anymore if there wasn't this mystery in life. And you just keep coming to this thing over and over again. And look, this word, I think the word insanity is stupid because this life is insane. We do the same things all the time. We wake up, we drink our cup of coffee, we go to the bathroom, we shit, we wipe our ass, we brush our teeth, we go for a walk, we go to work, we come home, watch TV, play a video game, do some studying, go to sleep, wake up, drink coffee, take, take a walk, take a shit, wipe our ass, brush our teeth. It's the same, life is insanity in and of itself. And what breaks up the insanity and the monotony for me is this mystery, is not knowing, is looking to figure it out. But I know I'm not going to figure it out. <laughs> I'm not going to figure it out. It's never going to be solved. This is the Unsolved Mystery series, people. You don't even need to watch Unsolved Mysteries. Just look into nature. Look into how this all came to be, and that's your, un that's your unsolved mystery show right there. You want to talk about the Discovery Channel? You don't need the Discovery Channel. Just look into nature. Look into this whole thing, how the universe works, when, where, how, and all this, and you don't need the Discovery Channel. Everything is right here, even when you're not so joyful about this thing. You know, I'm not always so joyful about this thing, but it's still something that I can fall back on and I can at least have something to talk about. Even though I'm not getting anywhere, it's not accomplishing anything. It There's no goal. I'm not achieving anything with this. I'm, I'm just saying what is. I'm letting it be what it is. And that's what it is. And I can't do a damn thing about it. 